We have a guest here coming to Radio Row. It's Patriots linebacker Matthew Judon joining us here on set in Los Angeles. Uh, Matt, thank you. Matthew, thank you for coming by. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. How you doing? You know, running around Radio Row, you know how I go. Yeah? You, do you like this week or, or not? Oh, I, lo I love Super Bowl week. And, you know, I just can't wait till I'm in one. Okay. Yeah. So how come how come you weren't in one last year? What happened? What happened down the stretch with this uh, team? We, we we lost our last game. That's usually how I go. Uh, the Bengals the Bengals got hot. I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, the Buffalo uh, Bills got hot, and uh, they won. Honestly, it, I mean, you just seen the the game that they lost versus the Chiefs. They was rolling. They was rolling in. It was kind of a defensive letdown. Then overtime rules, how I go. They never got the ball back. But uh, the way their offense was rolling at the end of the season and and their defense was playing, it was uh, they was playing really good football. Well, so Go ahead, man. We don't need to – I mean, you know the story, but 9-4, and four, mm -hmm. defense is playing great, everything's good, and then all of a sudden things kind of flipped. It mm -hmm. just started to roll downhill. Mm-hmm. What happened with the defense in particular? Because it felt like things got worse in the final five games. Uh, I, I don't know, honestly. We uh, we kind of just played some good teams, and we wasn't playing our best ball. And you can't do that at the end of the season. Uh, it's, it's really no excuses. I wish I wish I can be like, well, this person got hurt, and it, but it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was just we wasn't playing a uh, good football, and I think. Uh, after like two games, then everybody try to start making a play. Like I'm going to be the player that do this. I'm going to be the player that do that, instead of just playing within the defensive scheme and stuff like that. And I kind of think that's kind of what happened. So in your production, sort of mirrored that. You sort of again the production, the stats tailed off in the second half versus the first half. Was that an injury situation? Were you fully healthy down the stretch? No, no I'm, I'm fully healthy. Okay, yeah. so nah, it was, was it a schematic thing? How they you were using you? You say that way. You say that with a little sly <laughs> smile. I mean, nah, I mean, I, I'm football injured, but yeah. yeah, I'm nothing that I need surgery on. Nothing I gotta like hold back on. It's just uh, a long season, so you have nicks and nags here, but I don't, I don't have any injury. So what what happened to you individually? Did teams start to play you differently and maybe scheme against you a little bit? I, th I think it was a little bit of that, but yeah, I just got to find ways around it. I don't I don't have no excuse for nothing. Like if I'm out there, I'm supposed to make plays. That's what I'm paid to do. That's who I am. Uh, I I should have made more plays coming down the stretch. So uh, I have to I have to get back in the lab. I got to be more in shape because knowing that all right, I'm gonna get chipped. <clears throat> I'm gonna have an extra guy. I got to. Uh, get around uh any of that i just gotta i just gotta be ready how about a system fit you think bill's system is good for you i mean he's you know he asks i think more of defensive players in terms of discipline holding your gap you know not uh rushing too far upfield you know those sort of things i think bill's obviously a little more detail oriented on that stuff does that suit you did you were you comfortable with that approach yeah yeah i'm i'm very comfortable with that and uh like you said uh middle of the season when you're rolling and when everybody doing it it works. It works, and so you just gotta stick within the system. Uh, and I think, I think we can do that. We've shown that we can do that, and uh, we proved that we can do that. We just gotta stick to it. Okay, uh, Matthew Judon here from the Patriots. He's here to talk about the Black Women's Health Imperative. We'll get to that in a second, but a few more questions. So I'm just gonna ask you that. There's been a lot of speculation, mostly from people like us, mm -hmm. about the the coaching staff. And particularly as it pertains to the defense, no clear defensive coordinator. I mean, obviously it was a joint effort. Was there any, you know, I don't know what the right word is, any sort of breakdown in that communication or structure that contributed to things at the end? Like how, fans would look at it, someone like me would look at it and say, well, how can you have a defensive coordinator when nobody's a defensive coordinator? Okay. No, we we have a system, we have a scheme, and it wasn't a breakdown in that Uh it was just execution, honestly. Uh, you go back, you go back and look uh, at the film and look at like the big plays we was giving up. If this guy was just in this gap or this this guy did this, uh, a lot of those plays shouldn't have happened. And you know, uh, it's easy. It's easy as that. Uh, so the defensive coordinator, whoever calling the calls, they were calling the right stuff. Uh, we just got to execute it, and uh, we got to execute it on every snap because it would be, you know, 
we'll be getting off the field and stuff like that, and we'll have we'll have good series or we'll look good for time to time, but then when then when we don't, it uh, looks terrible. I, I think you just said whoever who's ever calling the plays, like it. Do you know who calls the plays? Yes. Yeah, Steve. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So, but Gerard Mayo leads most of the meetings, right? Mayo leads the meetings and Steve calls the plays. That's not awkward at all? Uh, we uh, we we understand it. We we understand what's going on. Uh, Coach Mayo uh, leads the meeting, but also Steve leads the meeting. And it, it doesn't matter who's the defensive coordinator. I think, uh, I think a lot of people would try to put that on that. But we're with our position coaches so much more than with our def uh, defensive coordinator. So, uh, but when we're in a meeting, it's not like only the defensive coordinator talks, mm -hmm. you know. So, like, say you're the leader of a podcast or the radio hmm. show, they still get to put their input in. Yeah, I try not to. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I really – less is more. No, right. Right. This is a monarchy. Yeah. All well, guests. And kind of like Foxborough in that way. <laughs> All yeah. guests on Radio Row are presented by Jock Market. Trade fantasy sports, make real money every second of every game. Jock Market. One more football question before we get to the uh, health imperative here. Give me a thought on Mac Jones. What did you think of him and how he carried himself Baller. as a rookie? Baller. Ball. And, you know, we saw it at the Pro. You, you see him do the, the gritty there? Yeah, this, yeah. Okay, so he, he has this reputation of sort of being like a dorky, cool guy. And did we see that there in the Pro Bowl? And is that the way he is behind the scenes? Uh, Mac is a very cool dude. He's a, he's a great leader, uh, very intelligent on the game and where the ball needs to go and uh, everything like that. So, I, I mean, I love Mac as a quarterback and uh, as a person he, who he is. Uh and I think he's going to be great for uh, New England. I think he's going to be great for our offense. And I think he he's going to be just a great player uh, oh. individually. Okay, Matthew's here for the Black Women's Health Imperative. It's the first and only national nonprofit focused solely on the health and wellness of black women and girls. You just want to give me a, a minute on this and yeah. your, your involvement with this? Uh, well, so... Uh, it's it's about getting screened. It's about going to the doctor, uh, and it's about learning your body. Uh, we we are just trying to encourage women of all races, honestly, to just uh, get checked up. Uh, so my mother uh, had cancer, uh, breast cancer, and she got checked up and she, well, she actually did a, like a self check and she was like I, I feel something weird so she went and actually got checked and it was early in the process and uh that saved her life uh but i think a lot of people are scared of what a doctor could say then uh actually and so they don't go to the doctors put it but, off yeah yeah but if you if you fi find something or something's wrong with you and uh it's usually not there um i think you should go get checked up go check on yourself and you know even if it's even if you like i don't think it's really nothing then a doctor second that is like oh there's nothing wrong with you that's the best news you can get but uh if it is and and they be like okay well we can do this this and this from there, you have options. But if you go too late and it starts affecting other parts of your body, you like you still have options, but it's just lesser uh, and the chances are worse. So I want every uh, man, woman, and child, you know, to start regularly going to the doctor, start regularly checking up on itself, and uh, honestly know your body. If it's If it's something that's there that shouldn't be there, you know, just go get it checked on because the worst thing uh, you can do is not go and uh, let it affect you. And then it not only affects you, it affects everybody around you because they have to live with those results as well. Okay. For more information, tune into the 23rd annual Gospel Celebration this Saturday night on Bounce TV, 8 p.m. Check your local listings on that and go to BWHI.org. Matthew Judon, thanks again for coming by. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, right, good luck next You're year. You're bigger than I thought. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm going to start being nicer to you.